chapter 1, verse 22, and was a known by face unto the churches of Judea. So he was not, uh, he was secretive. Notice though, the churches of Judea which were in Christ. Now, did you read that? So notice right here, the churches of Judea, they were in Christ before Paul. Why is that important, Pastor? Because there's a group of heretics called hyper-dispensationalism. Come, Come on. So hyper-dispensationalism, let me erase this real quick. So hyper-dispensationalists, they teach that it wasn't until the middle of, the uh, the middle of Acts, that's why they're called mid-Acts. So if you ever hear a group called mid-Acts, don't watch their videos. Don't Amen. listen to that. Okay? Good advice. Good advice. So when you hear the word mid-Acts, it should be a red flag. And I'll just draw it in red so you can get the memo. So mid-Acts is a red flag. So don't, don't watch them, period. That's it. So mid-Acts, they believe that in the middle of the book of Acts, where Paul was forming his ministry, that's when the body of Christ started. That's when people start to get in Christ. Before the Apostle Paul, it was all just a Jewish ministry. Now that's nonsense, and I taught you that last Galatians Bible study. So I'm not going to get too much into it. But here's the idea. Okay, so let's just assume this. So here's Jesus Christ on the cross. Before then is the Old Testament. And then after that, we got right here the church age. That's today, the Christians today. Now, we believe this is very important to mark down, which people don't do, but you have to put a transition here. That's the key against anti-dispensationalism and hyper-dispensationalism is to put a, a transition here. This transition was going from Jews to Gentiles. So because it's a transition, it's not like God switched from Jew to Gentile. He didn't switch. He was slowly, gradually having the Jews fade away and slowly, gradually turning to Gentiles. That's why you're going to see a lot of Jewish doctrine and Christian doctrine mingled in the New Testament. You ever notice that with the apostles' writings? See, there's that mingling. Because they started at Jerusalem. Use your head. They started at Jerusalem, and then they were eventually spreading out to Gentiles. So that makes a lot of sense when you read the books in the New Testament. It also makes sense when you read Paul's writings. It's very different from the other apostles' writings. Yeah. Because he's the apostle to the Gentiles. He was yeah. focusing on them. So the hyper-dispensationists, what they would like to teach is that they would claim that the body of Christ or getting inside Christ started with the apostle Paul. Because why? Paul is the one that revealed clearly about the body of Christ, which is true. Paul was the one who revealed it clearly. Paul was the one who revealed it clearly, his gospel. But to teach that there was no body of Christ before Paul is baloney. There were people who were in Christ before Paul revealed clearly yeah. the revelation of the body of Christ. Now, let's use your head. Do you need a person to tell you that you're in the body of Christ and you have to make the body of Christ start when he says it? No, you don't have to. God can just start the body of Christ before someone even says it. Yeah. He can do that. You understand that fact? Jesus Christ did not have to tell people that uh, I am the son of man who will take away the sins of the world. He didn't have to say that when he was a baby. Ever since he was a baby, his plan started to take away the sins of the world. Yeah. He didn't have to wait till 30 years old when he said it for people to believe it. Yeah. See, you don't have to believe it like when a person says it. The plan could be already beginning long before you even say it. That's right. My friend, you don't have to have a street preacher telling you you're burning in hell, uh -huh. and then you think, oh, now I'm going to burn in hell. Yeah. No, you were already condemned yeah. to hell before we even preached that That's to you. That's right. Okay? You don't need someone to reveal it to you to make it happen. Okay? Sometimes something can come before someone is revealed. Okay, so... Let's look at this case right here. Were there people in Christ before Paul? That's what Paul said right here at verse 22. So he was persecuting these people. But look at this one, verse 23. But they had heard only that he which persecuted us in times past. So in verse 23, the churches of Judea, they heard that when Paul persecuted them times past before them, now preacheth, so Paul is now preaching, notice, the faith which once he destroyed. Now that's very strong right here. 
So notice right here that Paul, he was persecuting not just people who were in Christ before him. So we know that body of Christ is not here. It's like right here. But not only that, the faith was even before, too. It did not have to start with Paul. It's before. But I thought you said Paul was the one who clearly revealed it. Here's the thing, okay? Like I told you before, just because a person reveals it to you, it does not mean that beforehand it wasn't already starting. That's right. That's something important to understand. So you got to understand this. Paul was the one who was revealed very clearly about these matters. Now, let's use your heads, okay? If you know your Bible, then this is going to be very helpful for you, okay? If you're going to take the apostles and then you're going to take Paul, who do you think is most clear in Christian doctrine? Is it the apostles or Paul? It's Paul, right? It's pretty obvious. Here's the idea. Paul is the one who, because remember, he was learning from not just God face to face, from who as well? Peter and James. So he was accumulating all this knowledge together. So by accumulating all this knowledge together, people understood the gospel and the Christian faith clearly with Paul. See, Paul was gathering all the pieces together, whereas the other people before him, they only had pieces and glimpses of it. They didn't know it clearly. Now, you might say, wow, really? They didn't know it as clearly? Yeah, look at 1 Peter. 1 Peter. Well, Isaiah mentioned about the death and the burial of Jesus Christ, and the psalmist mentioned about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So the Old Testament saints, they talked about Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. If that's the case, my friend, then the apostles would not have been in fearful mode when Jesus died, buried, and resurrected. They would have rejoiced that he did that so that all the world can be saved. It is true there were prophecies about Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, but see, it's all in pieces. It's all in pieces, glimpses of it. Paul, he took all the pieces together, added them all, and that's how we got the clear gospel today. The See, that's what's the case. Look at the book of 1 Peter. So this proves dispensationalism. It debunks anti-dispensationalism, who argue that the Old Testament saints clearly understood this. No, they didn't. Yeah. Another thing is that it also debunks hyper-dispensationalism, which teaches that it wasn't revealed until the Apostle Paul. Uh, true, Paul revealed it clearly. But you've got to realize this. This was already in operation before Paul. And I'm going to show you some verses on that too. But uh, let's look. Let's just look at 1 Peter chapter 1. And then notice what the Bible says right here in verse 10. Uh, let's start at verse 9. Receiving the end of your what? Faith. faith. Now remember at Galatians, Paul was persecuting the faith which was before him, right? Okay, so this was a faith before Paul. But look at this. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Mm, okay, this faith that saved us. Verse 10, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. See, there is no doubt. There were people before Paul who talked about this. There's no doubt about that. Oh, so they understood and they got saved out of that clearly. No. Okay, so look at right here. Verse 11. Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. Verse 12, unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves. See that? It wasn't revealed to them. But unto us they did minister the things. See, it's us Christians who was revealed clearly. Which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. See, so now these people are able to preach the gospel. So the Old Testament, no, people in the Old Testament were not preaching this kind of gospel back then. Whether you like it or not, they didn't because they didn't understand it. All they got was glimpses of it. They predicted some parts of it. It wasn't until today at the church age that it was revealed and we got it. Now, here are several verses that you can use which proves that there were people who were in Christ before Paul. Let's look at several places. Look at Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16. Notice right here that in Romans chapter 16, there were people who were in Christ 
before the Apostle Paul. Look at Romans chapter 16, and uh, let's see right here, verse 7. Salute Andronicus and Junia, my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners, who are of note among the apostles, who also were in Christ before who? Me. So notice right here that the body of Christ didn't start with the apostle Paul. Hmm. Now I would like to ask you the hyper-dispensationalist this question. So is Paul the first person in the body of Christ? Who's the first person then? Hmm. So you'll notice right here that there were people who were before Paul. Before Paul. So it can't be just Paul. This is proven at Romans chapter 16. So Romans 16 debunks this. Let's also look at Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. And then we're going to look at Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. So notice there, there are several passages that debunks hyper-dispensationalism right here. We're going to look at Acts chapter 8. Now, this is before Paul's conversion, yes? Yes, notice that this person was delivered the gospel. He got saved exactly like we are. This person got saved exactly like as we are before the Apostle Paul. Let's look at Acts chapter 8. And then we'll read verse 37. And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Amen. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. Notice right here, this man got saved by grace through faith before Paul. So he was delivered that gospel. So the apostles, they were preaching about this before Paul. Now let's look at the book of Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. And then let's see right here. Verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. So notice right here that Peter is speaking to these Gentiles. It's not Jews, Gentiles. And he's talking about the salvation here. We're going to look at verse 36. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. And then uh, he talks a lot right here, so let's try to skip down over here. Verse 43. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. So notice Peter is recognizing right here that there were prophets or writings in the Old Testament that talked about this. But again, this was not clearly revealed to them. It's revealed to who? Us. Right then and there, Peter was dealing with Gentiles. That's what we are, Gentiles. We get that clearly. Believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. So they get saved. What happened on verse 44? While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. So notice right here, as soon as they heard about if you believe on him, you'll get saved. At that moment when they did that, that's when they received the Holy Ghost. So you'll notice right here, this is very different from the Jews that time. If you remember other places in the Bible, I'll explain it more when we jump to Galatians 2. But if you know other places in the Bible, remember it's transitioning, right? Because it's transitioning to Gentiles, you notice that this is becoming more clear. Clear. The clearness is growing as we progress here more and more. If you go behind it, you'll notice how much abstract, abstract, abstract it's getting. So thus, you cannot deny that you can't argue that people... They were saved by the same way they understood the gospel as clearly as we did, blah, blah, blah. You can't do that. The more you go back, the more abstract it gets. You got to understand that fact. All right, so let's look at the book of Galatians again. Galatians. Think about this. When Peter, at Acts chapter 2, what did he say? Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So he argued here, you have to repent and be baptized to receive the Holy Ghost after that. That's different from the Gentiles at Acts 10. All they did was believe and then they received the Holy Ghost right then and there. See, so it's more Jewish when you go back. 
It's more Jewish when you go back. There is no doubt a transition. To deny transition is denying history that even atheists even believe. They're, they all recognize there was a transition of Jew to Gentile. Let's look at Galatians chapter 1. And then we'll read uh, verse 23. But they had heard only, so the churches in Judea, they heard, what about Paul? That he which persecuted us in times past, remember Paul was persecuting them, now preaches the faith which once he destroyed. So now Paul is preaching that faith when he was against it before. Remember, he was against this before. So remember, this thing was preached before Paul. Where is that? Right here. We saw that. Acts chapter 8, Acts chapter 10. We saw that as clear evidence. Verse 24, and they glorified God in me. So now these people, they're glorifying God about Paul who got saved in the Lord Jesus Christ.